Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Samantha Snyder, and I am the research librarian at the George Washington Presidential Library at Mount Vernon. So today I'm going to be giving you a little overview of Eliza Park Custis, the oldest granddaughter of George and Martha Washington's. So Elizabeth Eliza Park Custis was born in August of 1776 in what is now known as Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Eliza was the second, though first surviving, child of John Park Custis and Eleanor Calvert Custis Stewart. She came into the world with the willful commanding presence she was known for throughout her whole life. John Park Custis, or Jackie, penned a note to his mother, Martha Washington, who was then at Mount Vernon to announce Eliza's birth. He said, I have the extreme happiness at last to inform you that Nellie was safely delivered this morning about five o'clock of a fine daughter. You would be much more pleased if you were to see the strapping hussy. Her clothes are already too small for her. She is in short as fine, a healthy, fat baby as ever was born. A fitting description for Eliza's very strong presence. And this is a portrait of Eliza by Robert Edge Pine from 1785. He traveled to Mount Vernon in 1785 to paint the whole family. So there's a portrait of the other three grandchildren and then George and Martha Washington. So you can currently see this portrait as well as the three other Pine portraits of the grandchildren in the museum at Mount Vernon. And I like this one because you can see the miniature that she's wearing is potentially one that matches a miniature of her father from the 1770s. And though Eliza and her sister Martha did not live with the Washingtons like their younger siblings, they would visit their grandparents for weeks at a time at Mount Vernon and in New York and Philadelphia during the presidency. So this letter from Martha to her niece, Fanny Bassett Washington Lear, written in May of 1795 when Eliza was visiting Philadelphia, is quite telling for what the Custis sisters did or did not get up to in their teenage years. So she wrote, the girls both claim that they they have no or anything that they do, but can stand at the window all day to look at what is doing in the street. So it seems that teenagers then are just like teenagers now. And Martha's letters are full of little quips like this, especially from this visit. She comments that Eliza sulked about and did not want to go to the dance assemblies or church because they were too tiresome, but she received plenty of visitors at the house. And she also comments on Eliza's appearance claiming that after a few weeks at Philadelphia, she looked much better than she did when she first arrived. But she said, of course, we cannot tell her so. But Eliza, just like her sister Nellie, had a penchant for the dramatics. And this is captured perfectly well in this portrait of her taken in 1796 by Gilbert Stewart. And Eliza, though she proclaimed she did not like the hustle and bustle of activities like her sister and her beloved grandmama, she did love to spend time with her grandfather. In 1796, when the artist Gilbert Stewart was painting his Athenaeum style portrait, which you can see on the right, this was never finished and has a very interesting long story of Gilbert Stewart keeping this and a portrait of Martha safe in his possession so he could use it throughout his whole life to continually paint likenesses of Washington for money in the 19th century. So according to family tradition, Stuart captured Eliza's own likeness after she had returned from a walk and stopped by to see the portrait artist at work. Her crossed arm stance and supposed spontaneous capturing of her likeness is an unusual style for Stuart, who normally used the stance for portraits of men. And it just goes to show, I think, about how tough she really was. I just love her very confident stance. She looks like business. You kind of see this young woman who was so sulky, kind of just leaning against the wall, watching quietly and observing her beloved grandfather. So this letter, which we have in the Mount Vernon collection, is a letter written by Eliza to George Washington around the time of Eliza's sister Martha's wedding. So she married Thomas Peter, and they lived at Tudor Place, which is still located in 
by Georgetown in Washington, D.C. So Washington had gifted his granddaughter a miniature, which Eliza, ever the sister, also somewhat jealous desired her own. She claimed that there was no other wish nearer to her heart than that of possessing his likeness and only hoped he would believe her sincere. And Washington, ever the lesson giver, very quickly told his grandfather or his granddaughter, no. Not because he didn't think she deserved one, but he was offering her life lessons about why he gave her sister one, marriage. He goes into one of the best examples of Washington being a parent and a grandparent. He wrote, having by way of a hint delivered a sentiment to Patty, which may be useful to her, if it be remembered after the change that is contemplated is consummated, I will suggest another more applicable to yourself. Do not then in your contemplation of the marriage state look for perfect felicity before you consent to wed, nor conceive from the fine tales the poets and lovers of old have told us of the transports of mutual love that heaven has taken its abode on earth, nor do not deceive yourself in supposing that the only mean by which these are to be obtained is to drink deep of the cup and revel in an ocean of love. And all this just because she wanted a miniature of him. Though if I was waiting on one, that image of Washington would not be the one I'd choose. That is supposedly the miniature that Washington had commissioned for her sister, Martha. So even though she may not have gotten a miniature or had the kind of charmed life that her sister did, she still made her own mark on history. When Eliza was visiting the Washingtons in 1792, she got inspired for some reason to carve her name uh, in the window pane of the yellow bed bedchamber. And it still survives in the little window pane that I've pointed an arrow to. And it's a very fitting image for this very strong woman who throughout her whole life was making her mark in every way she could. And 231 years later, it's still there. And I'd like to think she would very much appreciate that. So thank you so much for listening. <laughs>